What is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel and today I have a video on this vehicle in front of us here. This is my newest project that I just completed. So normally when I do you know kind of car stuff on this channel I record it in parts and you know I go over the whole process but this one was a special case. I just wanted to complete this project and then just make one video on it. So that's that's what we're doing. But anyways this is a silver 2007 Honda Pilot EXL all-wheel drive. You might be asking, Ryan, where the heck did you get this thing? And, uh, you know, what's the deal with it? Here's the story. So, me and my dad, about a month ago, were doing some work for a customer. And while we were at his house, he kind of walked over and he was like, Hey, you know anybody that's looking for a car? I have this 2007 Honda Pilot. My daughter wrecked it last week. And I'm just trying to get rid of it. I'll let it go for cheap. Now, me being the Honda guy that I am, I had to go at least walk over and take a look at it. I went over there, I uh, inspected it, it had some damage, it was in a front end collision. The front left is where it got hit, so kind of this area here. And uh, the way he explained it to me is his daughter was trying to make a left hand turn on a blind curve that is, and so she couldn't really see who was coming, so anyway she pulled out and I guess someone was coming the other direction and smashed right into the front of it. You might uh, be asking yourself, well, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? And that is because I spent the last month or so fixing it. Now, I'm going to post some pictures because I, uh, of course, did not record any of the process, but uh, I will be throwing up pictures for the rest of this video. Anyways, this is what it looked like when I bought it. It had some uh, front end damage as you can see. It was hit in the front left. It seemed like a fairly low speed collision because while I was inspecting it before I bought it, I was kind of poking around you know, underneath the bumper cover and such. And it looked to be that the core support was only damaged right in the very corner, like where it mounts to the headlight. And so at that point, I was willing to take a chance on it. I offered the guy 1400 bucks and he took it. So anyways, I got this pilot for $1,400. Now, I, these things are worth about six to seven grand on the street, you know, not wrecked. And so I was like, okay, well, I bought it for this much. If I can fix it for less than the cost of just buying one that wasn't wrecked, then I will consider that a win. So that's what I started doing. My first order of business was I wanted to go ahead and bring it home. It had one mechanical fault because of this accident. The One of the lines for the transmission cooler was actually pinched. And so I didn't want to drive it long distances, but luckily the guy only lived about three miles from my house. So that was a, a risk that I was willing to take. And if we look behind the bumper here, you can kind of see uh, the auxiliary like replacement cooler I put in there. But anyways, we'll get to all that. So anyways, I got the car home. And at that point I was like, all right, well, I better start ordering some parts. So I waited until the weekend after I bought it. So I had some time and I decided to just tear off the complete front end, you know, the, the what was left of the bumper, the fender, and the headlight, and all that stuff. Now once I got everything stripped off the vehicle, I looked at the core support, and I pretty much verified that yes, the biggest damage was in the kind of corner section that, that to where the fender, the front of the fender, and the headlight mount to, and so I was like, okay, I can work with this. So I spent about four hours, I believe, with a crowbar, a big sledgehammer, and a bunch of stuff, and I started bending the frame back into shape. Now obviously I know that's not like OEM repair spec approved, but I'm trying to do this on the budget and I'm not planning on reselling this car. I just wanted to be able to keep it for myself. And so I spent about four hours on that and I had, I believe I had the fender and the headlights uh, came in from my online orders at that point. So I just basically got it to the point where I could mount the fender and the headlight to it and it lined up with the hood and whatnot. So at that point I was like, all right, sweet. This is going all right. So at that point, the bumper was lost in transit, so I ended up having to buy another one. So this project ended up taking a couple weeks to finish. But as you can see, the long story short of it is I was able to pretty much get the front end looking pretty good. As you can see, uh, pretty much everything you're looking at right now, except for the hood in the front end has been replaced. So all of that stuff is new. We've got a new left front fender on this side, as you can tell. We've got two new headlight housings off of eBay. The fender was from eBay as well. We've got a new front bumper cover. That was actually from Honda, so that's an OEM bumper. New lower valence, new upper grille, everything in the front, new fog lights. Everything in the front has been replaced. 
uh, again, like I said, minus the hood and that, that side fender. So, as you can see, it looks pretty good. After I mounted everything on there, obviously they were black unpainted panels. And so at that point, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to drive it for a couple weeks like this. But eventually, I did, did want to get it painted. So, last week, I went to Mako. I went there because I have had cars painted by them in the past and I was uh, pretty pretty reasonably happy with the result and they were able to quote me a price to paint the bumper the fender and to blend the door in with the fender so there wasn't you know an obvious paint color difference and so they were able to get that done in four days and as you can see it came out really nice again only the front bumper and the fender and part part of the door was painted the rest of the pilot is the original silver color and as you can see it matches pretty darn well. So, I mean, honestly, unless you're looking at this thing really, really closely, you can't even tell it was in a wreck. And uh, I am super happy with how this came out with uh, the painted panels and everything. Now that it's completely done, it looks freaking mint. Now, of course, if you walk up to it, you can kind of tell, okay, this is the side that wasn't wrecked. You can see how tight this gap is here and with the fender and stuff. And then if you come over here, you can kind of see there's a larger gap uh, around the headlight and stuff. But, you know, I mean, given what it looked like before, and you guys saw pictures of it, at least standing from back here, you can't really tell. And I am, like way way happier than I thought I would be with how this repair came out considering I did everything myself in my driveway and I'm not a body guy so this was my first time attempting something like this and I'm really happy with how it came out it looks pretty great as you can see as you can see so that is pretty much the gist of the body work I had to do with it to get it roadworthy now we'll go ahead and take a little walk around of the pilot otherwise you know besides that front corner hit this car was completely mint the paint and and the interior in great shape I bought it from the original owner you know he was the first owner that bought it new always had the maintenance done on time he actually gave me a three inch thick uh, stack of papers with maintenance records for this thing so he's uh, you know taking very good care of it it has 188,000 miles on it which we'll get to in a second but it's uh, yeah this thing is in great shape overall it's a full, you know, EXL all-wheel drive fully loaded model, so it's not like a base model LX. I wouldn't have purchased it if, if it was. But uh, yeah, this thing is freaking sweet. And yeah, I, I'm really happy with it so far. I've been driving it the past week, and it's been dope. I also would like to mention that he said that a week before the wreck, he actually put four new Michelin tires on it. So it's got brand new Michelin uh, XLT AS tires on it. And uh, yeah, so that was a huge selling point as well. It's got brand new tires. The brakes are in great shape. I just looked at those. Uh, the timing belt was done at 103,000 miles. It has 188 now, so it's getting, getting close to needing another one. But like I said, all the maintenance was up to date. I did have to do a couple of fluids, which we'll get to once I pop the hood here. But yeah, overall, as far as the exterior body work and the uh, progress of that project, I am super happy with how it came out. So at this point, I think I'll pop the hood and we'll talk about some mechanical stuff that I ended up having to do to the car. All right, boys, now we're under the hood. Now, <laughs> you can kind of tell a little bit more of the damage that happened. As you can see, this is uh, this top mount for the headlight is a little bit wavy compared to that one. So, you know, it's pretty obvious that it's wrecked if you, if you look closely, but again, I am super happy with how it came out on the exterior. But anyways, we're done talking about that. Now we're gonna talk about some maintenance stuff that I had to do. Now, unfortunately, throughout this project, throughout the process, I mean, I wanted to get this thing smogged and registered once I had fixed the front end for the most part. And unfortunately, after I started driving it, you know, 20, 30 miles, the check engine light popped on. And I have a theory as to why this was, or I have a theory as to why the part that failed did and we'll get to it in a second but anyways the check engine light came on for a p0420 which is the bank one catalytic converter which on this j35 is in the back so that was uh not too pleasing <laughs> it ended up costing me i believe 1500 bucks to fix the part itself was 1200 dollars. so you know there's not much i could could have done there that was a pretty expensive hit, but we'll talk about budget for this uh, at the end. But I had that done, and while it was there having the rear catalytic converter replaced, I decided to do the transfer case and the rear differential fluid, and I also replaced the automatic transmission fluid by myself at home while I did that. So we've got pretty much all new fluids in the car. The engine just had an oil change, uh, I believe in January, so like a couple of weeks before it was wrecked. Again, like I said, this thing was super up to date on maintenance, so 
I'm leaving the coolant because, you know, once this thing hits 200,000 miles, I'm going to have to do the timing belt and water pump and stuff again. So it's probably fine until then, although that might be a couple years from now. But like I said, the, the Honda Blue coolant lasts for quite a while. So that was no big deal. We also had to replace this intake hose because this thing was split here and here, and that would have passed emissions testing like that. So I put a brand new eBay intake tube on there. It's got a fairly new battery. I'm not really sure how old it is, but it starts the car and it's a nice interstate Megatron, so no complaints there. As far as everything else, I really don't think there's anything wrong with this car mechanically. I've been driving it all week and there's, there's literally nothing wrong with it. So yeah, just had to do a couple little maintenance things under here, no big deal. Uh, this is the J35A9 and why that's significant is because I'm really glad that this car has this motor and that, that is another reason that I purchased it. Now what do I mean? Well, uh, for the beginning of the first generation Pilot, the 03 to 05s, they were all four wheel drive. But starting in I believe 2005, and this is a 2007, they started coming out with two wheel drive models. And the two wheel drive models have a slightly different engine that has a variable cylinder management, also known as VCM. And what that basically does is it'll shut off the rear bank of cylinders and it'll turn into a three cylinder for fuel economy reasons. Now, the reason that I'm glad this is an all wheel drive model is because those did not have that. This is a slightly different engine, the J35A9. It does not have VCM at all. And so this is just a, a full, you know, six cylinder engine all the time. Don't have to worry about that. And the reason I bring this up is because it's not so much of a problem now in the newer Hondas, but when they first started doing this, and I believe this is one of the first vehicles to do it, this and the Odyssey, uh, they started having a lot of problems with the piston rings, and essentially, I believe the problem is because when that cylinder bank is shut down, all of the valves and stuff are closed, and so it's really just fighting its own compression, basically, and that just wears out the piston rings without actual combustion going on back there. So, anyhow, long story short, I'm really glad this is an all-wheel drive model, because I will never have that issue because this engine does not have VCM. I love these J series engines. I have one in my Accord, my 2017 Accord Coupe. Absolutely love it. Glad to have another one under the hood of here. And yeah, so uh, I was poking around in here. I don't really see any leaks. I mean, this is a really, really nicely uh, maintained vehicle here. So I don't think I'll have any problems with this thing uh, for a little while. So that is the under the hood story. Now there are a couple of things that I elected not to fix up here in the front. That would be the intake resonator. So if you wiggle on the air box, you'll notice it's kind of loose because it's, it's not bolted down. It's basically just got an open hose uh, in this area here. It's supposed to have a snorkel that comes back up and kind of goes to the grill, but I opted not to fix that. Just didn't have time, didn't order the parts. so. It's just, you know, open now. There's no intake resonator in there. The horn on this side got obliterated. I opted not to fix that either, or I just, you know, ignored it. So that is not done as well. So there's a couple of things that I forgot. And we'll also talk about the airbags once we get into the interior. But I believe that's gonna be it for the exterior, or the uh, under the hood, I mean, here. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it on the mechanical stuff. Uh, I'm, again, I'm really happy with how this paint job came out. They were able to ma paint match it perfectly. Uh, the only thing I am a little bit uh, disconcerted with is I did not request them to paint this grill. So that, that you know, it is what it is. But honestly, after I've been looking at it for a few days and driving it around and stuff, I actually kind of like it paint matched. It looks, you know, different than every other silver Honda Pilot around, which there are quite a few. <laughs> so I guess that's uh, my own little personal touch, even if I didn't really request it. But like I said, they did a great job. This is a, you know, base coat, clear coat job. This is not like a cheap paint job. Uh, it cost me 1100 bucks to, to do this. But yeah, it looks a lot better uh, paint matched and such. And it, it pretty much matches the uh, paint perfectly. So this is the OEM paint here, and this is what they did. And it, it matches pretty much perfectly, so that's, that's awesome. Anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and I guess I'll give you guys another little walk around of the car again, even though I already did. But now that we're done talking about it, let's do it again. Pretty nice looking vehicle. I kind of like these first gen pilots. I never really thought I was going to be an SUV guy, and I'm really still not. But this is my first SUV, and I gotta say, I kinda see why people like driving these big things around. This thing handles like a couch, it's super comfortable, there's room to haul a bunch of crap in there. You know, I, I gotta go buy a new microwave for our house, actually, and I think I'll take this to do it. But uh, yeah, I see why people like these things now. I actually kind of enjoy driving it around. Of course, it's not, you know, sporty 
at all, but it handles better than I thought it would, to be honest. So I'm pretty happy with it. I don't know. I think it's cool. And I think that, you know, given, like I said, this is a fairly optioned out model. It was maintained its whole life. It was taken care of by its original owner. In other words, I, I'm pretty happy that I purchased it. So there you go, guys. That is pretty much an overall exterior view on this pilot. Now let's go ahead and jump into the interior. So if we open this guy up right here, you can see the interior. Sorry about the glare. It, uh, it is what it is. Super sunny day out here in California right now. But I'll do what I can. Now this thing is super clean inside, not too bad. The seats do have, you know, a tiny little bit of wear, being that this is a 15-year-old vehicle with 100 and almost 190,000 on it. But it, uh, like I said, it's an EXL, so we do get leather seats, which is great. Open up the back, we can take a look at that. Again, super nice in here. There's literally pretty much nothing wrong. And uh, yeah, everything's in great shape. It does have like the cargo cover too. It came with that. Uh, it's got folding rear seats, it's got a third row, I don't know if I mentioned that already, but that's stowed away at the moment, but it's pretty nice. I'm just noticing actually that they uh, armor all my floor mats when I took it in to get painted, so that's no big, that's a, uh, I'm not complaining about that at all. Back here you can see we have a rear temperature control and a power outlet, so that's kind of nice. This isn't the uh, the plebeian base model, up there is this uh, seat belt, you can uh, plug that into here and that's for the center one. but. Yeah, it's a pretty nice interior, guys. Let me go ahead and open up the rear hatch real quick, show you that. So there you go. Like I said, it does have the cargo cover, so that's nice. Just got my work stuff in here, and it does have the rubber uh, cargo uh, floor mat too, so that's nice. Anyways, yeah, this is a pretty nice vehicle, guys. Let's go ahead and get into the front. I'll go ahead and start it up for you. Again, like I said, here is the interior. Now, we do gotta talk about one thing, the airbags. So, when this accident happened, the airbags did go off. The driver front airbag and the driver seat belt pretensioner both deployed, so I had to replace those. I found a used e-bag, e-bag. <laughs> I found a used airbag on eBay right here. This one is actually in really good shape, so it, it matches the nicely taken care of rest of the interior, and it's the right color. It's one of the only ones I could find. So, we've got a new, driver's airbag here and also replace the seatbelt so this whole seatbelt pretensioner assembly I bought on eBay as well from a junked car you can see it's a little bit dirtier than you know it it should be but I can get around to that eventually so again we have a a non-blown airbag and a working seatbelt so that's always nice let me go ahead and hop in here and now that does not that's not where the story ends and first of all let me go ahead and just start the car for you guys All right, so as you can see, we're at 188.596. I've only put a few hundred miles on it, but getting back to my point, you can see that the airbag light is still on despite me replacing this stuff. And that is because I did not replace the front crash sensors or the uh, SRS module. So those are the two things on the list that are you know still needing to be done. This thing is 95% done and that, that's the 5% of stuff that I haven't done yet. So. Yeah, to make the airbag system work again, I would have to replace both front crash sensors and the SRS module, or just get it re uh, reset, which you can do on eBay and stuff. But honestly, that's not a big priority right now. I'm not planning on crashing this thing again, rather, but of course it would make it safer, and so I'll get around to it. But for right now, I think I'm just going to leave it be. That's good enough for now. It does have a six CD changer here. Not the navigation system. I believe that's just about the only option that this thing doesn't have. So it just has a regular uh, ra FM radio with uh, you know XM and, and six CD changer stuff. But it's okay because when I got this car, the previous owner let me know that he put a USA Spag BT35 Bluetooth adapter in it, and that was basically wired into I believe the radio itself. So it, it kind of intercepts one of the channels for the discs, and it basically makes it so that you can play Bluetooth. Tooth. Now that was cool, except the sound quality was absolute trash. So I actually talked to my friend about this. He has a seventh gen Accord, which is kind of the same, you know, same year and everything. He actually had that same unit in his, and he said that he had the same problem with the poor sound quality, and he upgraded to the newer BT45 from the same company, and that fixed it. So that's exactly what I did. I went ahead and purchased the BT45. I'll go ahead 
and show you where I got where I had to mount it but basically the BT45 instead of well they're all kind of designed to intercept the XM tuner but uh, the previous guy just wired it into the radio but I decided to do it uh, correctly and I wired it into the XM tuner now the XM tuner on this car is located behind this plastic panel here towards the back you can see the subwoofer is back there and uh, now let's see I'm not really gonna be able to get to this actually because I'd have to uh, fold this seat out but essentially the uh, little unit I plugged it into the XM tuner, had to remove all this, and just wired it so it's under this third row seat. So if I ever need to get to it, I can just uh, pop this seat up and get to it pretty easily. So yeah, I forgot I can't really show you that right now, but that's okay. So anyways, moral of the story is I've got a nicely sounding Bluetooth system in here now, and the stock stereo on this car is actually pretty, pretty good. It's not quite as good as my Gray Accord Coupe, but it's pretty close, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to change out the head unit or anything. Bluetooth uh, with my iPhone is good enough for me. Moving down here, you can see we have automatic climate control, which is awesome. It works perfectly, nothing wrong with that. The AC still blows cold and the heater blows hot. That didn't get uh, damaged from the accident or anything. We do have heated front, front heated seats, sorry about that. And this looks like just a little, you know, not an ashtray storage compartment. And we also have a 12 volt socket right here. So that's pretty cool. Going down here, we just have a cup holder unit, which I believe comes out. More storage and that kind of stuff. Go ahead and yeah, you kind of have to smash that closed, but it is what it is. If you open this up, that's kind of like a pass-through. As you can see, you can kind of like run stuff out of here. You can put your pens and business cards and whatever. So that's cool. Got another power port in here. And yeah, so that's that. Uh, it does have cruise control and a sunroof. I haven't actually tested the sunroof yet, but I'm assuming it works. And yeah, this thing is pretty darn nice. Up here you can see, oh, I left a map light on. Oh no, that's because the door is open, never mind. So up here you can see we have our taco holder, and then if you look here, that's kind of like just so you can see your kids in the back or whatever, so that's okay. And yeah, so that's that's about all I can say about it. Like I said, 188,000 miles, I've only put about, I bought it like with 188,020, so I've put like 550 miles on it or so, and I'm pretty happy with it. So. That's about it, guys. Uh, I would do a driving section, but this is a three-row SUV. All right, guys, I changed my mind. We're going for a little drive, because I just remembered that there's something I want to show you guys. So, again, we're in the Pilot. I also want to talk about uh, something that I almost forgot to mention as well, the budget for this project. But first off, let's go ahead and drive around a little bit. Go ahead and flip a U-turn here. So, again, this is a three-row SUV, nothing too crazy, nothing too, nothing that you should get too excited about. However, comma, there is something pretty awesome that I uh, did not expect with this SUV, and that is the induction noise. Take a listen. VTEC pops like a freaking cherry on this thing. I am like, <laughs> the back of my mind is like, what the hell, why is it so loud? <laughs> because on my Accord, I guess with the way the intake is set up or just the, the variation of J-Series it is, v the VTEC crossover is nowhere near that loud. It could also be because there's no intake resonator on this thing at the moment, but either way, this thing sounds freaking awesome. So I wanted to demo that real quick for you guys. And also I want to talk about the budget for this project because that is something I forgot to mention. So I bought the car for 1400 bucks and my goal was to fix it completely sorted out for less than six grand because that is the price of a clean one with this many miles and whatnot. That's like the blue book value for a not wrecked one. So anyways, I spent about 20, $2,000 to $2,500 on body panels, uh, just parts, miscellaneous parts, and fixing the car that way. I spent $1,500 on the catalytic converter and a couple of hundred extra on the fluid changes and such. And I spent $1,100 on paint. Now, I added everything up exactly, and I can't remember the breakdown exactly right now, but the total came out to a little bit over $5,000. So, from start to finish, including the car, this car cost me about five grand to get a running, driving, not wrecked pilot. 
that's pretty good. I mean, uh, again, like I said, a clean one is six to seven, and this one has a lot of things going for it, it being a, a fairly optioned out model, having a good maintenance history and all that stuff. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with the amount of money it cost me to fix it, and I'm also happy with the quality of the way this project turned out. So I'm happy with how the paint job came out. I'm happy with my backyard repairs with the body work. And I, I'm pretty happy with this thing, like I said. And like I mentioned before, this thing rides really nice. I mean, my other, both my other cars are lowered on lowering springs and coilovers, so I kind of forgot what a nice ride felt like. And they're also on low profile tires, so having these huge, you know, 70 sidewall tires with comfy SUV suspension, it's pretty nice, especially when the road gets rough. And so this is a really good like road trip car, just cruising on the highway is where this thing is happiest, I've noticed. But also, like I said before, I've noticed that this thing handles a little bit better than I expected it to. And so that's nice too. It doesn't really, it doesn't handle like a refrigerator. It's a little bit better than that. Obviously it's not as great as a car, but end of story, I am keep rambling here. I'm pretty happy with this thing as a vehicle. And I wasn't really sure if I was going to be in the beginning, so. Sorry if I was a little bit all over the place. There was a lot of stuff to cover in this video, but I would like to thank you guys for watching this uh, video on the pilot and I'll see you in the next one.